combat sports fans welcome in to another great edition of strong style i'm your host jeremy the impact york this is impact media's weekly dive off the top rope or top of the cage to into the world of mixed martial arts and professional wrestling now tons to get into we are going to talk royal rumble uh we're going to go through uh some of the bigger highlights of aew tna with their relaunch uh some new japan stuff and uh wow women of wrestling as well but first i want to jump into ufc because the ufc this year has been on fire they just they are taking advantage of uh, the PFL buying Bellator. I don't know if I talked about that on the last show or not, but the PFL bought Bellator. What does that mean? We don't know yet. We know there is going to be a Bellator division, uh, like a, I, I don't know exactly what the, the details of that are, but I do know that uh, somewhere in the next couple of weeks, uh, we'll talk more about it as it gets closer, Somewhere in the next couple of weeks, Bellator's champions are going to face off with PFL's champions, basically to unite the championships, and uh, then we'll we'll go from there. And we'll, I don't know if they're going to run it the way that AEW runs Ring of Honor. That's not a bad idea. Run it as its own thing, stream everything. You know, it's still a division of everything. I, I really don't know, but... Um, in doing so, and in them, you know, taking about a month and a half to get everything set up and, and changed over and all the stuff they need to, well, that left a, a little bit of a void that the UFC said, you know what, we could fill that space and we're going to do it with some just ridiculous cards, just ridiculous cards. So kudos to Dana and crew for uh, realizing that you're the only MMA act in town. You're the big dog. I mean, you're always a big dog, but realizing that neither neither of your competitors that are now the same, part of, you know, part of the same group now, neither one of them have um, we're we're doing anything, so or we're not doing an event, so that's what you do. You go ahead and do an event. I uh, just want to talk about a couple of the fights that happened early on, and then uh, I'm going to do a preview of UFC Fight Night. Uh, Delize versus Imovov is coming up this weekend. Uh, I believe that's at the apex. I'm going to check. Um, you had Akalaev versus Johnny Walker, a.k.a. the last two people to beat Michael Smith. You know his name? No. Uh, Anthony Smith. Anthony Smith. Michael Smith, different guy. The last two people to beat Anthony Smith. Um, that's a whole other conversation to itself as far as Anthony Smith. I think he's still a great fighter. Let's see what happens with that. Um, but Alkaliev, he might be the next big thing of the light heavyweight division because, uh, Johnny Walker is, has always been up and down and up and down and up and down. And I don't, he could have been in a hot air balloon. I think Alkaliev would have flattened that thing to the ground, gets the massive TKO victory over Johnny Walker. Um, Alkaliev is not somebody I would want to face. I don't think at any time. I think he could be, you know, he could be half out of it, maybe groggy from cold medication, and I think he'd still beat the crap out of about anybody. He's just that good. Um, but he moves on. To me, it, it was the second biggest thing of that card. Um, and of course the first, the best thing to me of that card was Jim Miller. The ageless wonder continues to, to fight, uh, into his forties, continues to break records, most appearances, most fights, most wins. That was kind of, he just continues to win too. He still got pop in those punches. It, he's not just, you know, waiting people out and getting decisions. No, he's ending these fights as soon as possible gets the big submission win over benitez but jim miller man he's can we just stop with the he's not a hall of famer thing he's gonna have 
two thirds of the records. And you can say, oh, he's just been around that long. Yeah, in fighting, if you suck at fighting, they get rid of you. They go, nope, going down the road. You're not winning here. You're not doing good things. Hey, back back of the line, buddy. And yet, Jim Miller keeps winning. Jim Miller keeps uh, putting on shows. It's incredible. Just absolutely incredible. So, I know I'm not the only one, but hey, Jim, not only would we love to have you on the show, but uh, even if you never come on this show, uh, you got – you got fans here at Impact Media. We are behind you, and we will champion and pioneer whatever direction you want to go because uh, it's it's fantastic, and we're we're along for the ride. Absolutely, just along for the ride. Um, now that was the first event of the year. The second event of the year was headlined by Sean Strickland and Drickus Duplessis. I don't know why this was a split decision, because. Um, I saw it at least three and a half rounds to, to one and a half or two. If you want to say three to two, okay. But um, I thought Drickus won at least three rounds, possibly four. And we can debate on which rounds and that kind of stuff. But I just, Drickus, he had a game plan on Sean Strickland and he didn't let Strickland be Strickland. He he kind of did what Strickland does to people. He kind of marched him down and he and he worked on it. You know, he out footwork. Just he just out footworked him. He he beat Sean in his own game the first, you know, round or so. Even though Strickland Strickland probably got the first round, right? But I mean, he kind of let him be Strickland and then he just shut it down. It's and you know, if they lined up and did it again today, maybe Strickland wins. I think he'd have a slightly different game plan. And Sean Strickland's gonna be back. But then here, here, here's the log jam. And the log jam, we're gonna talk about another log jam later on in the show. Here's the log jam. Um, so you got Drickus, so who is the champ? Okay. Um and what a month month and a half, five, six weeks from now, is UFC 300, biggest show in UFC history. If he's able to make that, who's his opponent? I'll wait. There, there's two choices. And there's kind of a snag on both, if you ask me. There's, um, what, Izzy. There's Asanya. And there's Sean Strickland. So, if you do Izzy, which makes the most sense because they have heat between them, the big heat between them, um, first off, is he going to be ready to fight? We're told he is, but, you know, I can say that I'm filming this on the moon. and Unless you can prove otherwise, you just have to go with it. Clearly, I'm not on the moon. And then you get Sean Strickland, who just lost. Is, is he, would he be ready to go in six weeks? And and it's just big, you know, it's just big log jam because Strickland beat out of Sonya. So who do you who do you put? I think at this point, I give it I UFC 301, 302, one of those. Drickus versus either Strickland or or Izzy or whoever. I was talking, whoever you want to do. Uh, and that's the headline, and that's that's the top fight. I think you do that. I don't think you try to push this to be the main event and rush everybody into the uh, in the in the UFC 300. It's already a massive show. Um, it does need a headliner, I believe. I don't know, I don't know that it had one, and if it did, I I haven't heard of it. So, uh, but you've kind of created this issue. It's, there's there's not a contender behind the two of them yet. There there's there's some kind of lurking, but they're not they're not ready for that top spot. So what do you do? I mean, technically, if Strickland's ready and not Asanya's ready, you could say, well, those two fight, and they would fight uh, to see who the number one contender is. It's not a bad idea, but then Drickus gets left out for another. What, that'd be four months at that point, four, four and a half months, unless he wanted to randomly defend about a month later and then it would put everybody back on the same time schedule. But 
Adrikus is so good, it's really hard to figure out what you're going to do with him. Um, so we'll see. Now, I do have to keep in mind, uh, the next fight on that card, the co-main event, Raquel Pennington and uh, Buena Silva in the Bantamweight division. Pennington is your new Bantamweight champion. She dominated the fight. Just absolutely dominated this fight. Um, everybody's like, oh, yeah, she's been around for so long. I mean, it's good that she finally gets her due, and it doesn't work that way. It's not just, you know, you've been here, you know, Bill's been here the longest, so we're going to promote him to supervisor, or we're going to give him the biggest piece of cake because he's been here longer than anybody. It's not the way the fight game works. It's actually not how pro wrestling works anymore. Your tenure not always indicative of what can happen or what, or what opportunity you get. No, she she earned this one. She definitely earned this one. Um, it's going to be interesting because we heard the rumors and then the rumors were proven true. And those rumors are Kayla Harrison signed with the UFC. So, do we see Harrison in the Bantamweight? That's possible. Does Kayla Harrison coming back, or Kayla Harrison coming to the UFC, entice other people to come out of retirement? I think you guys know the name I'm talking there. Does... uh? Does this create a super fight with Chris Cyborg, who's under contract with Bellator, who was bought by PFL, as we said? Does she find a way into a super fight? And how would that even happen? Because I doubt the UFC is going to want to cross promote with PFL and Bellator, and I doubt PFL Bellator wants to cross promote with the UFC. So, what do you do? Chris Cyborg's having a box because they can't find anybody to fight her over there. Kayla Harrison just completely sidesteps or comes to the UFC. Um, does Amanda come back? That's the name. That's the name. I actually said it. I was going to hide it. Does, does Amanda come back? I kind of hope she does. But how long before Amanda versus Kayla? And then what? So if Kayla wins, Amanda disappears? If Amanda wins, does Kayla disappear? What what happens? It's it's kind of a it's kind of you know I don't know if you want really that super fight to happen because I I think you get one or two shots at it and that's it. And then you're gonna lose one. So we'll see what happens with that. It's uh, but uh, good for Raquel Pennington. You know she got the new family and everything, and and everything seems to be coming up roses right now, and it's just, it's fantastic. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, last thing on the UFC card there, last thing we're going to talk about fighting-wise, uh, good win by Neil Magny over Mike Malott. It was a TKO victory. Here's the takeaways from that. The UFC very much wanted Mike Malott, and he still could do this. He's just going to have to build up again. Wanted him to be that Canadian star. They wanted him to be the new GSP, and, and he has a lot of those tools, and he, he could be that guy, but he needed the big win over the gatekeeper, Neil Magny, and Neil Magny was having none of it. Um, Malat just seemed to, at times, not have much of a an answer for Neil Magny, and Neil Magny made him pay, so good for Neil Magny, and, you know, time marches on. That's, that's just the way the cookie crumbles that uh, – UFC is going to either have to find a different Canadian star or they're going to have to build Mike up even more and, and hope that he takes that next step. And uh, let's get into, got it over here. They put it on the side screen. Not sure why they put it on the main screen. We'll put it on the side screen tonight. So let's look at it here. As we always do on this show, for people new to the show, I talk about the uh, main card, pretty much the top five fights. I give you my picks, a little bit of my breakdown, kind of what I like, what I don't like. You know, might be short, might be longer. And uh, then I mention other things on the card that I think are uh, interesting or, or should at least pique your interest. So 
as I said, UFC Fight Night, we get a Roman Delize versus Nasruddin Imovov. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. In the middleweight division, uh, you get 12 and 2 versus 12 and 4. Looks like Nasruddin Imovov is the favorite at minus 170. Looks like Delize is a plus 140. I think you could flip a coin on this. It, that's pretty close. Um, you might make a little money on either one of them if you know how to bet. Uh, either the minus there or the plus one forty might be some good, might be some good money there. But um, this main event is is definitely not going to disappoint. What I think is going to happen: these two are going to try to stand and punch and kick the every living crap out of each other. And if either one of them get the chance to try to get some sort of hold on the other, that I think is where this thing is going to get decided. I think it's going to be decided on the ground. I think it's going to be with a grappling move or with, you know, some sort of submission or something like that. Who do I think is going to win? That's tough. That's really tough. I'm going to have to go. I'm going to go with the one that, that appealed to me first and the biggest here. I think Roman Delize is going to get the win. I think it's going to be in round number three. It's going to be with a minute to a minute and a half left. It's going to be determined on the ground. I think it's going to be some sort of submission. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, give me Delize over Imovov. And I look forward to getting proven wrong in case that happens too. Co-main event. Renato Moicano is taking on Drew Dober. Dober's one of those guys. They just keep putting him against people, and he just keeps mowing them down. You know, like one of these. Um, it's almost like they keep trying to feed Dober to people, and it doesn't work. He keeps eating the people that they just get him fed to. Uh, but Morcano, man, he he's not a slouch. Morcano is is definitely not a slouch whatsoever. Take a little sip there. Uh, he's he's definitely not a slouch. He's definitely going to bring it. He is the favorite at minus one eighty. Drew Dober is a plus one fifty. I think I'm going to go back to back dogs on this one. Give me Drew Dober. Possibly this if this go if this is a three round fight. It should be. If this is a three-round fight, Drew Dober's going to win by decision. If it's longer than three, Moicano's going to find a way to win in the fourth. We'll go that way. But uh, Dober's my official pick. Uh, Randy Brown is taking on Muslim Selikov in the welterweight division. Uh, Randy Brown, big favorite at minus 260, plus 210 for Solikov. Go Randy Brown. Randy Brown, uh, I think he's a product of Jamaica, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think Randy Brown's going to get it done. He's going to probably – gosh, Solikov is hard to knock down, hard to, hard to knock out. Randy Brown's probably going to have to win a three-round battle, three-round war here. But uh, give me Randy Brown. Matchup number four, we finally get the women involved. Vivian Arujo is going to be taking on Natalia Silva. This is Brazil on Brazil. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun in the flyweight division for the women. Um, I like Arujo, who is actually a plus 270 underdog in this, minus 350 for Silva. Um, I don't know. I just feel like Arujo is going to um, maybe get a good kick in. This going to set up, uh, going to set up some grappling that uh, will lead to her victory. I don't know if it'll be by punches or or something like that. I don't, I'm hard at predicting. I mean, I'm I'm not good at predicting endings, but uh, I think Arujo is going to set it up with a kick, and and uh, once they hit the ground, I think she's going to have the advantage here, and I think she can be able to pull out that victory. Now, matchup number five. I believe these are these are all ESPN Plus, by the way. I think everyone every one of them. All right. We're going to get uh, Aliska Kizriev 
against Mahmoud Muradov. Looks like Kizriev is the minus 175 favorite. Looks like Mahmoud Muradov is the plus 145 dog. Um, this should be closer than most people think, but Kizriev is 14 and up. And he is a buzzsaw. He is uh, uh, an avalanche snowball. He is a uh, he might be an avalanche of snowballs. To just keep to just keep building and building and building. I think Kizriev is going to end this in probably the second round, which is crazy because Muradov is just a beast as well. But uh, give me Kizriev, and like I said, probably second round TKO something like that. All right. Other things on the card that I think are worth your time. First off, the rest of this card. But Molly McCann is fighting the co-main event of the undercard. Uh, you know, she's trying to build up. She's trying to build up. She got knocked down a couple pegs, and even she said she wasn't focused enough, and she wanted to go back and kind of re-engage and get things going. So she, that's what she's been doing. She took some time. Looks like she's back. She's wanting to get in there. She is against Diana. Belbita was no slouch. No slouch. No, if you're a professional fighter, there is no pushovers. Uh, Belbita is going to bring it. I think uh, she's got some strikes that Molly's going to have to try to dodge and duck out of. But in the end, I think Molly McCann's going to win the uh, arm bar or something arm related. Um, Molly is the minus 290 favorite. I don't know if she can make a whole lot of money on betting on Molly McCann uh, as far as straight up that way. But uh, that's the other thing I would say on this card. Watch Molly McCann because she's fantastic. Uh, Diana's good too. But, uh, you know, support Molly. That's that's what I'm going to say. So that's our UFC coverage. Let's get into the Royal Rumble. The Royal Rumble is my favorite pay-per-view of the year. It absolutely is. I don't know why. I've always loved the Royal Rumble. I like the uh, the thirty man or thirty woman concept. I like the 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 random draw. Let's let's not pretend that it's a random draw, but um, I definitely just I just enjoy it. And uh, this year's was was no different. We knew we were going to see some faces. We knew that um you know we got to see let's go with the women we got to see Naomi come back we got to see Jordan Grace yeah the reigning defending undisputed TNA knockouts champion Jordan Grace was in the Royal Rumble so let's stop this rumor Jordan Grace is still in TNA in the new TNA, we're going to talk about that. She's still in TNA. How was she allowed to do this? Well, TNA and Triple H got together, WWE in general, and said, hey, how can we make this happen? And they made it happen. And like he said, he Triple H doesn't want to talk about Forbidden Door. He doesn't want to talk about the door that, oh, you don't, and then, oh, it's, oh, they crossed it. It's goofy. AEW did a pay-per-view about it. That's great. That's that's what you do. But as far as the rest of it, we don't we don't need to call it Forbidden Door because that, that door's wide open. And WWE is not dumb. Uh Jordan Grace got to be on a massive stage. Uh TNA's gonna get there. But uh she actually did pretty good. Um, who else do we have in there? Um there was another one somewhere. Oh, I know who it was. We, where was she? When did she come out? Number 28. Jade Cargill. Jade Cargill made her WWE debut. You know, she's walked around NXT a little bit here and there, but she hasn't. She hasn't made a big statement. Well, she did in this one. She come in. Sorry, not sure what's in my eye at the moment. 
Um, she came in and she was going toe to toe with Nia Jax, and she actually threw Nia Jax out. That is crazy because Nia was eliminating everybody. I think she had eight. Is that right? Eight total people she threw out. Yeah, eight total people. But your final four was, I believe, Liv Morgan, Tiffany Stratton, Bianca Belair, Bailey, and Liv Morgan. Okay, that's your top five. And who outlasts them all from the number three spot? Give me Bailey. I knew Bailey could do it. I knew she was going to do it. Now the only thing to figure out, is she going to go after Stablemate? And uh, go for her title? Is she going to go for the SmackDown title? The plan, remember, was that Ashka and Kyrie Sane were going to be the tag champs. Well, they are. They won this week. That uh, stablemate there was going to win the world title. And that Bailey said she was going to win the Royal Rumble. And they go challenge to take the other belt. So they had all the belts. And Dakota Kai, I guess it's the cheerleader or the mascot. Which, hmm, she could be a pretty good manager if she wanted to be. The problem is, is that the faction that Bailey started, damage control, she doesn't seem to be in charge of anymore. So what's to stop her from going after EO Sky? She could beat her. She could definitely beat her. And I think it would be the better match. So we'll see what she does. Congratulations to Bailey. Like I said, I'm always a fan of bad Bailey, but in this case, she'd be good Bailey. Bailey's still good. She, I hate people. Who, oh, bona fide Hall of Fame. Why is that the, the be all end all the Hall of Fame? Bailey might be one of the best the WWE has had. Doesn't matter if she's in a Hall of Fame or not. She probably will be. But Bailey is, she has had one of the longer tenures outside of like Natalia. She has done it all multiple times, and I think she still has solid runs in her as the champ. I want to see it. I want to see it. WrestleMania moment. I want to see Bailey with a championship. Um, we'll talk about this match tonight. That's fine. Roman Reigns defended his Universal Championship against Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles. I thought Roman was going to retain the entire time. Did it surprise me when Roman retained? Nope, just told you. I thought he was going to do it the whole time. If anybody was going to take it, it was going to be Randy Orton. But uh, LA Knight is not to that level yet, and AJ is not either. They ne LA needs a little bit more of a kick up, and AJ needs to build up probably two steps. Randy's the only guy that is just Randy. So anytime Randy shows up, he's he's got the credibility to do whatever he wants. But in this case... It just it didn't make any sense. Roman's going to be the champ. Um, we're going to get into the men's Royal Rumble winner and what it sets up, and you'll know when I tell you who won pretty much if he's going to go for the Raw Championship or the SmackDown Championship. We did so. It's setting up some pretty entertaining things because uh, we got to talk about some of that too. Because, let's see, what else was it? Uh, the U.S. Championship, Logan Paul defended against Kevin Owens. This is a pretty good battle. Logan Paul proves that he can he can hang. He can be better than a lot of people, but he can hang with a Kevin Owens. Kevin's, Kevin's really good at making you look good as well. He's a really good mechanic, really good hand in the ring, but he's also exceptional with his own stuff. Um, the fact that it ended with Kevin getting caught, the good guy getting caught using brass knucks or whatever he had in his hand, Interesting wrinkle. Are they trying to make Logan good and Kevin bad? I don't know. Everybody loves Kevin. I think you leave it alone. Everybody loves to boo Logan Paul. So I think uh, I think I leave it how it is. Um, I know Logan Paul signed the, uh, a new deal or a better deal or a more consistent deal with WWE. So maybe we see him a little more often. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, overall, a decent match. Then we move to the we move to 
the men's Royal Rumble match. Right out of the gate, we get Jimmy versus Jey Uso. This is that was hilarious to me. I thought that I was like, oh great, two guys who who need to prove something, and uh, they did. They they proved that they're they're really good. This this match was really really solid. Um, they had some pretty good people. Had some people. I'm going to clarify. I thought Okada was going to show up, and I thought some other people might as well. Um, Okada, we'll talk about him. I mentioned this as well in New Japan. Um, his deal is up at the end of this month. So as of tomorrow or Thursday, uh, Kazuchika Okada is not under contract in New Japan. However, he is going to stay on the tour and do some February dates with New Japan because he's that honorable of a guy. He's been there. Guy said in 07 or something. He's been there like 15 years. It's crazy. Um, he has had a run like John Cena where he's basically been on top for like 10 years. It's just uh, just incredible, man. Just, and for people who are new to Kazuchika Okada, WWE, you're going to like him. He is very... He can wrestle anywhere. He could wrestle AEW. He could wrestle WWE, TNA, Ring of Honor. I mean, he could, he he has wrestled. He just wrestled in TNA this past weekend or this past week. But um, he's going to honor all those. So, see, he's still under contract, so he couldn't show up. Even though I know you, Jordan Grace showed up, but that's different. Um, but the return of Andrade, luckily here locally, we got to see Andrade at the last uh, Musha Lucha. Uh, wrestling show there's one of those coming up in march we're gonna we're gonna do some fun stuff for that you guys gonna like it. but andrade came back um there was another one that i thought was fantastic it was uh, omas came back it was good to see omas and braun breaker throwing him out I could see Breaker getting the call up and him and Omos having a pretty good program. I think they could learn a lot from each other. Um, the Pat McAfee wrinkle was pretty funny where he acted like he wanted to get in the ring and then he got in the ring and then got back out and then got in the ring and got back out and eliminated himself. That was pretty funny because he looked as surprised as anybody that his own music went out. <laughs> it's almost like they didn't tell him. Like they just had an open spot because maybe somebody is hurt or maybe somebody – missed a flight or something and just all of a sudden they're like well pat's sitting at ringside let's let's just uh play his music because he just looked around like why are they playing my music they're like i think you're in the rumble he's like i don't think i am no no, i think you are okay uh the archery stuff is hilarious uh still hilarious um good to see ricochet back uh sammy's another one we sammy has not really been all that prominent here lately. So see him at number 30. I thought that was fantastic. But in the end, who wins? Cody Rhodes. Comes down to Cody Rhodes and uh, CM Punk, basically. Isn't that right? I think so. Or no. It came down to, um, yeah, they, 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 they threw, they threw, um, God, this is Gunther. I keep wanting to call him Walter. But they threw they threw him and McIntyre out. Uh, McIntyre just <laughs> he gets crapped on again. It's God, just, dude's really good. And it's just he he's getting outranked. It's kind of why Christian Cage or Christian had to leave and go to TNA back in the day to, to be a headliner because there was just no room in WWE. And McIntyre's almost at that point now. He should almost go to Japan or he you know, not Japan. Maybe you should go to. He should go to TNA. That'd be a good spot for him there. But Cody wins. So we got Seth, who's currently dinged up, says he's not going to miss Mania. Okay. So you're thinking Seth versus Punk would be a great WrestleMania match, except Punk got hurt. He has torn his pectoral and he is going to be out. Bummer. He is because he said, well, there's always next year. Yes. Sounds like something Aaron Rodgers would say, but uh, it's going to suck. 
having Punk back, having him on Mania was only going to make it that much better. He, you know, potential headliner spot on either day, depending on what he was going to be involved in. And uh, just, that's, it's a real bummer, man. Real bummer. Um, also, so, so you go Cody, Cody Roman, right? It's gotta be. It's Cody versus Roman. It's the Rhodes family versus the uh, Anawai family. Roman has to lose to somebody. Why not Captain America? I mean, it makes better sense because Seth and Cody would still be a really good match, but it just there's no story there where the whole finish the story. I'm back to avenge and but I mean basically Cody to me Cody came to WWE so that he could restore the Rhodes name because you know Dusty was well thought of after the fact that when he wrestled he wasn't um Vince McMahon always went out of his way to to try to get the upper hand on any wrestling family I mean that's highly documented um, the last time we saw Cody's brother Dustin in a WWE ring, he was painted in gold, wore a uh, long blonde wig, and um, did some weird promos. Now, he's a really good performer. Dustin is one of my favorites. This is just overall, just the guy has had a ridiculous career. He's still in AEW doing it now. But the last time we saw Cody up until he come back is he was stardust. You might remember that. Cody's helping we don't. He looked like a a Halloween version of Beast Boy from from the uh Teen Titans. I mean, he was like purple and black Beast Boy. He was he did the best with it. I mean, he he did things just outstanding, crazy things that that were awesome. But he's there to restore the Roach name. That's what he's trying to do. And Triple H is letting him do it, which is definitely a good thing, and we all know the uh, boiling pot. It's not even hot water. It's boiling pot that Vince McMahon's in right now, and I'm not going to get into it on this show because those are legal matters, and just Google it. If you, if you want to know what's going on in the world of Vince McMahon right now, just Google it, and uh, don't be surprised if uh, Brock Lesnar's name's in there somewhere. We'll see how that shakes out because for now, they're allegations, but – it's man, as good old JR would say, is bowling shoe ugly for both of those fellas right there. Uh, but like I said, new faces. The rumble I thought was fantastic. You get you get what uh let's see, you get the four way, you got the US title, and you got the two rumble matches. So I had four matches all night, or maybe there was a fifth or some zero hour stuff or something. That was it was still fantastic. It it did everything that that you wanted it to do. So kudos to WWE. I, I thought it's your best pay-per-view. We'll see. WrestleMania is coming up. You got some other ones. But uh that's why I like the Royal Rumble. It's it's always fun. There's a lot of moving parts and there's always something for everybody. So let's go to AEW. Let's go to AEW. What's going on in the world of AEW? Well, Will Ospreay's coming very, very soon. He's finishing up the last of uh, some touring and some dates with other people as well. He's done some stuff with TNA, which he can still do with AEW. That's, they have a working relationship. That's not a problem. But when Will Ospreay shows up, first off, he's got a stablemate who's already on the roster. He's actually got two. But uh, Kyle Fletcher will easily defect back to him, I believe. Um, and then maybe his tag partner will come back and we'll get the uh, the Empire there. Would love to see Jeff Cobb and some others, but uh, Will Ospreay is like a young Kenny Omega. For people who knew Ken- or watched Kenny Omega 10, 12 years ago, yeah, that's, that's Ospreay. Just innovative, just all over the place, just so freaking good. And uh, him and AEW, he'll be champ by the end of the year. He'll have at least a belt, if not the belt, because it's just he's that good, guys. You guys are going to love Will Ospreay. Uh, if I could show you. Oh, here it is. The famous calendar that I got. 
No, nope, can't see it. No, nope. is it? No, you can't see me now. There we go. We'll try to do it. There's <laughs> this is bizarre looking. Uh, but Will Ospreay is the uh poster child for January. And uh that was weird, some weird glitches right there. Uh but uh AEW fans, you kind of know Will Ospreay. Wait till he's there every week. He he's gonna he's gonna drown out some people there and you're gonna see a little bit of a roster churn. Not because he can't get along with people. It's not that. No, no, no. This is because he's so good, it's gonna push some people from the top down. And when it pushes them down, it's gonna smooth out this division and push more people down. It's gonna smooth out that division, it's gonna push some people out because there's you know only so many seats on the bus. Um kudos to Christian, by the way. Christian is just on another level. I would say he might be one of the best heels in AEW right now. And, and his work just continues to get better and better. Uh, just eventually him and Edge are going to go at it again. We know that. But he's doing such a good job of being so dastardly that it's it's just awesome. It's um, to, to steal a line from from them back in the day. It, it so totally reeks of awesomeness. Just uh, incredible. Just incredible. Uh, Joe is the champ. You guys asked me about this from the time it happened. How, what do I think of Samoa Joe as the champ? I have no problem with it. Samoa Joe is a great champion. I'm glad he's getting a run as champion. I know it's MJF is dinged up. A lot of people thought he was going to jump ship and go to WWE. Well, did you see him at the Royal Rumble? He didn't go anywhere. He loves AEW, guys. He's going to stick around at least a little longer. I mean, at some point he may make a run at WWE, but he looks around. And he's like, I was just one of the longest triple B champs of, of, of all time. And yeah, this is a young company, but I just had the belt for what ridiculous almost over a year. He just he had one of the best championship runs. Why would he leave? Because he's he's still at the top there. If MJF goes to WWE, he's a mid carter. They're going to start him there and see if he'll build himself up. Why in the world would you do that? Plus, he can still do movies and executive produce movies like he did Iron Claw, and he can be in that. He's in that, by the way. So, uh, Joe is a champ, though. I think Joe's going to have a good, solid run. Somebody is going to knock him off. Don't know who yet. Be in, eh. MJF coming back could, but I feel like it's going to be somebody different. By the time Joe loses, it's going to be to somebody different, and it may make uh, it may make a, a little bit of a log jam there at the top. There's not one right now. There's just a couple people up there. They're on that level. I mean, Will Osprey, Samoa Joe, that those two could go for an hour and a half, and you'll you'll you won't leave your seat. Well, I mean, you'll stand up, but you won't you won't leave. You're not going anywhere, and then. I got to say this fun th thing I like to do is think about if, if there was a contest and this is just shows what kind of nerd I am about wrestling. If there was a contest where you could come out with any wrestler, it doesn't have to be your favorite wrestler. It could be any wrestler, you know, based off their entrance, who seems to have one of the better entrances. I mean, you could say Adam Cole before he, he just made the faction that's the undisputed kingdom or whatever, because now he doesn't do the boom. So um, Darby Allen would be fun because uh, you could either ride a skateboard down or you could uh, kind of roll around on the floor the way he does or just take off at a dead sprint and drop kick somebody in the side of the ring. That seems kind of fun. You get to hang out with Stink. That's kind of fun. But there's an entrance that uh, really grew on me, and I really like it. And it's the Bullet Club Gold, or or you know, or Bullet Club Gold's what I call them. They uh, it's it's the Guns, the Gun Brothers, it's Juice Robinson, and it is Jay White. It's what played Jay White. Now I don't know where Juice has been the last couple of weeks. It's just been the trio, and they've kind of joined up to make the. Uh, the uh, 
Bang Bang Scissor Gang with um, the Acclaimed, which is an interesting little six-person faction. That's, that's kind of interesting, actually. But that entrance that Bullet Club, Club Gold does, where the four of them, like one's this way, one's this way, one's this way, one's this way, and the camera pans, all does the 360 thing. Like that's really cool. And the fact that they come out with a with a Jay White that's that's a cardboard cutout. I thought about getting a cardboard cutout of myself and just making some funny videos, but uh love it. Loving what they do. That would be really fun. You know, if Juice is gonna be out a week, you guys need an extra guy. I mean, I can't I don't know that I can quite go to the levels that Juice Robinson does, but uh I give it a pretty good shot. Um you gotta give me a shirt, of course, but uh other than that. I wouldn't mind being in the Bullet Club, wouldn't you? But uh, AEW, man, they've got some killer stuff. Having Deanna Perrazzo show up, having uh, uh, Valkyria, they, uh, or Ty and Valkyrie. Ty and Deanna are supposed to wrestle this week, and that is must-watch TV. Those two ladies are fantastic. You guys are going to love Deanna Perrazzo. Most AEW fans aren't familiar with her yet because she spent a lot of time at TNA or actually Impact Wrestling. And before that, she was in NXT, basically, where she was basically getting swallowed up and she was a highly touted prospect. They couldn't figure out what to do. And so she hit the indie scene and she hit Impact Wrestling and made a legacy. That's how good she is. But TNA, speaking of TNA, they've relaunched. They've relaunched TNA. They are no longer Impact Wrestling. Thank goodness. For one, it was weird having Impact Wrestling and Impact Media. It, I appreciate them ducking out of the way. Appreciate them ducking out of the way. But no, they relaunched. Uh, TNA is what it should have been all along. You got Moose as your champion. What I think of Moose as the champion, I think it's one of the best people you can put as your champion. Dude had a chance to go to WWE years ago. Decided, no, I'm going to stay here and I'm going to keep building this thing. Fantastic. Former Atlanta Falcon, by the way, Moose. Offensive lineman, I think. Uh, but Moose is a champ. Love it. Got a faction around him. Great. That faction is not going to try to buck the system. They are going to continue to support Moose. And I think it's going to be good things. Uh, Jordan Grace is your TNA knockout champion. We talked about her. She was just in the Royal Rumble. She's a tough cookie. She's tough. And it's going to take somebody special to beat her. They're going to have to build somebody up because, like I said, I think Naomi just left to go back to WWE and Deanna Perrazzo left for AEW. They're going to have to kind of retool the knockouts division, but there are some really, really good ones on there. Uh, Danny Luna I'm a big fan of. Um, of course, uh, I just forgot the tag team. What is the name of that team? What is the name of that team? I'm going to find it going through the roster. Uh, it's the one with Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich, uh, MK Ultra. That is a ridiculous team, by the way. Although, the other night they took on uh, Danny Luna and uh, uh, Jody Threat, which I thought was a pretty cool team. That's pretty, I mean, if you want to put those two together, that's that's a really cool team. And they actually held their own for a while, but MK Ultra is just they're super over right now. So they are smart to continue to just push them to uh, all kinds of links. In fact, Masha has been champ before. She's probably closer to another championship run if she took on if she but uh killer kelly i think is not far behind if you could push either one of them i think you'd you'd definitely be doing uh some good stuff you know you got the grizzled young veterans who have won over there they are a fantastic tag team um you have nick nemeth who showed up Dolph Ziggler guys for people who don't know nick nemeth he can still do some New Japan stuff. I think he should do some New Japan stuff. Him and Dave Finley got into it at uh, like two weeks ago. No, at Wrestle Kingdom. I think it was Wrestle Kingdom. So if he wanted to get in some stuff in New Japan, I think that'd be great. But uh, Nick Nemeth versus Moose, 
fantastic. Nick Nemeth versus, you know, a mop is Dolph Ziggler is like this generation's HBK. When the lights shine the brightest, he is on and he is money. Absolute money. One of the best performer, in ring performers I've seen. And that's that's a long list of people that I've seen, but um, other than that, man, I really like the the uh, the launch of TNA. Obviously, next week we're going to dig more into the action that happened, uh, but for this week, you know, I just wanted to kind of brief overview a lot of these, and then New Japan. So everybody's like, "Oh, well, they they lost Will Osprey to AEW, and they lost." Kazuchika Okada to WWE. Oh no, what are they gonna do? I was like, I don't know. They what they only had those two guys? You mean the other 60 people on the roster aren't any good? Is that what you guys are saying? You guys can see my sarcasm. How about some of my favorites? Like right now. We just had Sonata, who's one of my I'm a big Sonata guy. I'm a slightly bigger uh Tetsuya Naito fan. In fact, I gotta check with him. One of my little nephews was a big Naito fan as well, especially when he found out his Uncle Jeremy was a Naito fan. But, um, I mean, we just saw Sonata defend against Naito. Naito wins. He's now the IWGP World Heavyweight Champion. Those two. Those two. That's that's one of the new big rivalries because Sonata come through the Los Ignorables de Japón, that night, the faction that, that Naito runs. He still runs it. And... You know, you had teacher versus evolved student here. And in this case, the teacher won. That's something you don't see a lot. But uh, Sonata is on a whole new level. He's part of just five guys faction. Um, he is a main eventer over there. He, you know, he built up and he got to that level. Uh, but you got Naito over there. Uh, Dave Finley is the global heavyweight champ. Dave Finley, man, he is like the new Jay White. He's this international guy who's just chock full of talent and with the right push and the right support around him he runs bullet club but he runs it completely different than the way anybody else has ran it and i actually kind of digging it uh but dave finley over there he's the next jay white he's gonna blow up and he's gonna be massive hopefully they keep him over there um you've still got hiroshi tanahashi who is there it was a good way to say Tanahashi is like he's like part John Cena, part Randy Orton, part Shawn Michaels, part I mean he's just like the ageless wonder. The dude is just a legend over there, and just continues to do it. I mean he's the world TV champion right now over there, and he he could win the world heavyweight champ at drop of a hat. Uh, I like that they're integrating people from across across the pond and everything else uh, as, you know, Eddie Kingston as their, their strong open weight champion. Eddie Kingston, Japan, man, it just works. It works big time. Um, they got a uh, Iwatani, Maya Iwatani, who is their uh, IWGP women's champion, their strong women's champion, uh, Gulia. Gulia. You're going to probably see Gulia. And probably I would say an AEW ring, but it could be a WWE ring. Love seeing her TNA ring. Uh, but you're going to see her. She's one of the biggest indie darlings at the moment. Plus, she's in New Japan. It definitely helps. Um, who else are we going to talk about? I said, the weird thing is Okada is part of a three-man team that is the six-man tag champion. So, at some point, they're going to lose. But... You know, just combing through the roster. They still got Bushi. One of the most underrated people is Bushi. He's part of the, the faction with Naida. Bushi wrestles his tail off. Um, God, who am I looking for? There. There is somebody I'm missing. Who am I missing that I am trying to talk about? See, something New Japan does that the other ones sometimes snag and have a little bit of issues doing is building building the new guys 
into small guys, building the small guys into medium guys, the medium into top guys, and the top guys into top upper tier guys. New Japan can develop the crap out of these people. Shinsuke Nakamura come through here. Like I said, you're going to see Okada. Uh, Will Ospreay was able to bloom and blossom in a place like New Japan, where if he would have went somewhere else initially, I don't know that it would have necessarily worked out. But, uh, they, I mean, they still got Hiroki Goto over there. They've got Jeff Cobb, who I talked about earlier. Um, who was that another guy? I swear there's another guy. And Kenta went back over the, Lance, Ar Lance. The fact that Lance Archer is not pushed as just a massive wrecking ball baffles me. I mean, if, if I had him in any organization, he might be world champion six months or less. Um, who am I missing? Who am I missing? I mean, Minoru Suzuki, you guys have seen him on AEW. There's Sonata that I talked about. I don't know. Shingo Takaji is really good. Um, Tai Chi is really solid. There's Naito. You got Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. The, uh, I think Haku is their dad, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, they were the Gorillas of Destiny. They kind of do solo things now, but they're both super good. Uh, Titan is a good junior heavyweight. Tomohiro Ishii. There is somebody. Who am I missing? I'm going to go to Suji. Yuji Nagata, who wrestled the other day against Daniel Bryan. Oh, there he is. Zack Sabre Jr. That dude can tie you up 50 billion ways. Like, like he'll grab, he'll grab your arm. And then before you know it, he'll grab your arm here. And then... He'll have it twisted this way, and then he'll take your wrist, and he'll turn it this way, and then he'll like take this knuckle and do this one, and then this one over here, and before you know, it, and it's just like all up behind your head, and you just don't know what in the world is going on. And then if you happen to get out of that, or you try to get out of that, he grabs your leg, pulls it in between your ear and out your nostril or something, and just the dude just submission to submission to submission. It is crazy. He's actually added some good strikes and some good like uh, aerial moves here lately. He didn't need them, but I mean, if Zack Saber Jr. had a good run. Uh, up in the up in the top level, it it wouldn't surprise me one bit. But uh, man, New Japan! If you can catch New Japan, uh, you can stream them. You can also catch them on TV for an hour each week. They usually follow TNA Wrestling um, on uh, your local channels there for that. And uh, watch New Japan, man, because they it's where we get the name Strong Style. Strong that New Japan Strong Style is just a, a way about fighting. It's like the way of the warrior, and it's it's really, really good. Uh, last few minutes of this show, because this has been a super long show. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, I want to talk about, wow, women of wrestling and the log jam at the top that uh, they have there. I'm going to try to remember everybody's name. I am usually not very good at doing that. But you have... see if I can pull this up. You have uh, Penelope Pink, who was the recent uh, champion. You have let's see. Who all is in there? There we go. Because they shook it up. They they brought back some people that I was I was like, whoa, who, who are all these? Who are some of these people here? And Um, come on, where are you? Okay. So you have uh, Princess Aussie, you have Penelope Pink, you have... I'm aware. Here we go. 
You have uh, Abilene Maverick, the governor's daughter who just recently come back. Uh, Tormenta has, has kind of been up towards the top. Uh, the Beast just come back after, what, breaking her leg, I think, a couple years ago. You got Vicky Lynn McCoy and, and the rest of that bunch is hanging around. There's there's such a logjam there at the top that um, I want to see how they – I want to see how they they shake out because, like I said, there's there's just a uh, like I said, you got Abilene Maverick, who is the champ right now. Uh, Adriana Gambino is one who's really building up. She's really good. Um, then you get into Americana and Ariel Sky and the Beast and BK Rhythm who I'm a fan of, uh, Chantilly Chella, Foxy Fierce is actually really, Fury? Fury's one that, that to me, has a chance to make a run at the top if, if uh, given the right, the right path. And, because uh, she's really good, she can take on bigger people, smaller people, people her own size, and, and, she does really well, really good performer. Um, I could definitely see Fury being one of the next people boosted up to the top. But like I said, there's so many new people this this year. Goldie Collins showed up. And, uh, of course, Jesse Jones, uh, Candy Crush. For all you people who don't watch WoW, you think I'm making these names up. No, these, these, are, these are actual names, and these are awesome people. Um not even I'm not even counting the Carlsons who are a great tag team, but if you split them up, they could they do just as good. Uh Laurie and, and Lindsay. I mean, they could be great singles people. They don't want to do that probably. Um there's another one somewhere. I was gonna say Santana Garrett came back. She is a a, a legend, a women's legend. And I think that was all of them. That I, yeah. But if you get a chance to watch WoW, it's on locally as well. Watch every week or go, I think, on their YouTube or on their website. And it's really good. It's it's not – a lot of people think, oh, it's just cheesy women's wrestling. No, it's not. These these Every one of these women can just flat out go and perform. And uh, it's, it's part of why we watch every week is uh, it's good wrestling. Everybody that knows me knows that I watch wrestling that is good and entertaining. I want an athletic uh, could care less what people look like for the most part. Can you wrestle? Can you go? I think of it as though I am running the show. If you can wrestle and you can entertain to me, you have a place on the card and that's just kind of how I look at things. But I think I've talked for an hour or better. So, we will get out of here for the night. Uh, shout out to my parents, by the way, who got me this shirt last time they were down at, at uh, Hogan's Hangout down in Florida. I hope you get down there at some point as well. But a uh, shout out to them for getting me this shirt. Amazing shirt. Um, other than that, this has been another edition of Strong Style. I'm Jeremy the Impact York. Make sure to find us at Impact underscore media underscore on youtube and at team impact media on x on the x till then i'm jeremy the impact york and we will see you guys next week go watch wrestling go watch fighting